I beat Cuphead without using my hands. I put my Hori Rap Fort fight stick on the ground and put my feet on top of it and walked up to talk to Elder Kettle. After that, I entered the hardest part of the game, the tutorial, of course, and managed to breeze through that easily. I collect the coins from the strawberry and hop into Porker's Emporium. I decided to buy the roundabout because I figured this would be the easiest way to use without my hands because, you know, it just goes from one side to the other and I can just spam it. Now, I wasn't sure how hard this challenge was going to be going into it because I've never imagined playing, you know, Cuphead with my feet, but it actually went really well. I thought it was going to take me like at least a week to beat it, but I was actually managing to breeze through a lot of these bosses. My general strategy was just to stand in one place for as long as I could, spamming the roundabout and then moving only when I absolutely needed to. I managed to uproot the root pack very easily. Hey! Ribby and Croaks were up next, and Ribby and Croaks weren't too bad. The first and the second phase were really easy. I was able to breeze through them pretty easily and make it to the third phase. The hardest part was the third phase because of all the moving around I had to do. I had to dodge the coins, I had to parry the lever, and I had to rely on which platforms I got, so it was up to a lot of RNG on this part. There are three possible platforms you can get during Ribby and Croaks. You can get the tiger, or as you saw earlier, you can get the snake, and I needed the bulls. If I could just get two bulls in a row, I knew I could beat the third stage, and lo and behold, Behold, here's my first bowl. I parry the lever one more time, and I'm lucky enough to get a second bowl. Let's see if I can clutch it out without one HP clutch, baby. With Ribby and Croaks croaked, I was able to gain access to the first mausoleum, which once you beat it, you gain access to the DLC, so I'm able to get the Astral Cookie, which will hopefully make this challenge a lot easier for me. I, I know this is cheating a little bit, but come on, guys, I'm using my feet. I tell you what, this video gets 100 likes, I'll do this again, but using Mugman instead. Gooplegron wasn't too hard, it was mostly just a lot of running back and forth, left and right, and then I will just spam my roundabout. I took a little bit of damage, but as you can see here, I'm just running around like a headless chicken, and I still managed to defeat Gooplegron on my first try. It was extremely easy to say, the, to say the least. Hildeberg was up next and Hildeberg I thought was going to be a lot harder because it was my first plane level but luckily enough for me it was just a bunch of up and downs. I didn't really move anywhere else. I hugged the side of the screen. I was worried though for future plane levels because I was going to be more precise but at least for this one the UFOs were easy to dodge. The stars I could dodge. I just wish I could use my EX a little bit better. I take some damage there but it's okay I get the bomb off. Hey! I thought Cagney Carnation was going to be a lot harder because of the stuff that was going to be on the screen. But as you can see here, the roundabout takes care of them nicely. And then I can just stand on the all the way to like the, the most right platform and just spam my roundabout. It was really easy to do. Like I think Cagney Carnation only took me like one or two tries to do. And I was able to take him out very easily. Surprisingly, is he supposed to be a hard boss? Yes! With the final soul contract of aisle one in my possession, it was time to move on to aisle two. And this is where the real fun was going to start. The first boss on my list was Jimmy the Great. And Jimmy the Great has three possible attacks when you start the fight. He has the cat attack, he has the knives attack, and then he has the trash attack. And the one I wanted was the knives attack, but I had to work with what I got. The hardest part was the pillars. I could not navigate these for the life of me, man. I, if, I could, if I could just get through them, the last two phases were pretty easy, but I would just lose so much health during this phase that I knew as soon as I got one perfect run, I knew I would just beat the level right there and then eventually I do get my perfect run I managed to make it through those pillows while only losing one heart. Thank goodness for the third phase I just sat above the boss using my bombs and it just makes that part really easy I don't really have to move a lot the fourth phase was pretty hard dodging the bullets But what made it hard was the turban once I was able to figure out the timing on all of it I was able to defeat it pretty quickly and for the final phase I was able to save up a bomb use it sit in the corner while shooting him in the neck and eventually he went down Yes! After doing Jimmy the Great, which was a plane boss, I decided to take my skills to another plane boss because I felt pretty warmed up. So I took it to Wally Warbles. And Wally Warbles was actually a lot easier than Jimmy the Great. It was just literally a bunch of moving up and down. The first phase, all I did was I moved up and down. The second phase, I also just moved up and down to avoid the feathers. Very easy. The third phase, again, just moved up and down, followed him around. Now, the fourth phase was really hard because if he went to the to the left, it would be a bad time because I would just get hit by whatever he throws at me. But I realized if he just goes to the left, I can just go to the right and I won't get hit by anything. And that is what I do here. It makes this boss fight very easy. And then when he moves to the left, I just move down below him. I keep shooting, putting up maximum DPS. I keep using my X's and eventually his goose is cooked. Yeah!
I then went on to complete Mausoleum 2, which unlocks me Super 2. And if you use that with Miss Chalice, it basically just gives you an extra heart every time you use your Super. It's very helpful, so I can I can, I can can tank a free hit. I then made my way over to Baroness Von Bonbon, bon, and I tell you what, I absolutely decimated this boss. The first lackey she sends out is the cupcake gets absolutely destroyed. The second lackey, the gumball machine, too easy. What, all right, what, what are you doing? Is this tutorial island? The third lackey she sends out is the waffle, and I ate that waffle up. I tell you what, it got destroyed. And then Baroness Von Bonbon herself during the final phase, all I did was I jump around, I spam my roundabout, and she ended up going down too without a fight. Oh, let's go! Pepe the Clown was up next, and this boss wasn't too bad. I was able just to stay on the left side, spam my roundabout, and it was able to hit Beppy and the ducks above, so I didn't have to worry about those. And then when the roller coaster came during the second phase, I was actually able to navigate it pretty easily. I guess I'm getting pretty good at this feet thing, huh? And then this next part was really easy. All you had to really do was stand under him on the horse roundabout. As soon as the final phase starts, I get slammed by the roller coaster, and I'm only down to one HP. Let's see if I can clutch this out. All I have to do is avoid these penguins and hope I build enough EX cards to get the final heart. I was about to make it to aisle three with only 115 deaths. I was feeling confident and I was feeling really good about what was coming up. Little did I know the next boss was going to be one of the hardest bosses I was going to face during this challenge. Grim Matchstick was the only thing standing between me and aisle three. And I tell you what, this boss destroyed me. It completely nullified my plan of sitting there and doing nothing because it constantly had me moving. And his attacks covered so much ground. I had to be so precise. And I sort of also hope that the cloud platforms were in my favor. Like, I can't even tell you how long this boss took me. I think it took me like two, three, maybe even four hours. In four hours, I only got to the second phase once. And I made it there with only one heart. So you know this wasn't going to end well but i did notice that if i made it to the second phase it was a lot easier because the clouds were going in the opposite direction so if i could make it through the first phase with at least three or four hearts i bet you i could finish this boss i had to come back the next day because my feet were just getting so tired from doing this boss it was just so hard to get through this first phase without losing so much health it was it almost seemed impossible eventually though i did get a pretty good run where i made it through with like i think three hp and hopes were high i was in the second phase and I only lost about one heart because it was a lot easier than the first phase. Eventually, the second phase finishes and I have one HP. Let's see if I can clutch this out. That's a start. Oh! I then remember that I can summon Jimmy the Great if I spin my stick around. So I use my feet to vigorously spin my stick in a circle until he summons himself, giving me eight HP to defeat Grim Matchstick with. Let's see if I can do it this time. I breeze through the first phase. I breeze through the second phase, and I have five health left. Let's see if I can make it through this final phase. Let's go! Jimmy the Great might be cheating, but hey, I'm going to use what I got. With Grim Matchstick out of the way, I was ready to tackle aisle three. And tackle I did. The first boss I went up against was Rumor Honey Bottoms, and I thought it was going to be very hard with all the platforms, but compared to Grim Matchstick, Rumor Honey Bottoms was nothing. I was able to navigate these platforms freely, and I breezed through the first two stages. Except I ended phase two with one HP. Will I be able to one HP clutch this boss on our first try? I was scared of the fist path because that's random, and I was scared of the buzzsaw coming out when the buzzsaw came out i had to be ready and i was i jump across i managed to navigate perfectly across and i stay alive with one hp she does another one out of nowhere i was on the second one it attacks my spare heart and then i do get the knockout get up there yes the next boss on the list is Dr. Cow's Robot, and I knew this boss was going to give me a lot of trouble because I was not good at airplane levels yet, and there's always just so much on the screen during this boss fight, and I have to parry the pink things where I have to move my foot a certain way to hit it, and then sometimes I hit other buttons, and it made this boss really hard. And then even if I made it past the first phase, his second phase had so many extra attacks added, it was just so hard to be so precise. I knew, though, if I made it to the second phase, all I needed was one bomb to get past it, and then I'd be on to the third phase. And the third phase is a monster of itself look at this look how much stuff is on the screen at once look how precise i have to be that there's walls coming everywhere there's so much stuff flying at me it was it was it was almost impossible the hardest part about the third phase was this wall that would always come down as soon as the round starts and it would hit me every time i have to dodge the wall and dodge the accompanying crystal so the opening was really small i'd always enter the third phase with only about one or two health and i wouldn't be able to finish the job but eventually i did get one good run where i made it to the third phase with three hearts the wall comes down i 
go try and dodge it, but I just tank it right here. I'm down to two health. Eventually, I get hit again by another crystal, and I'm down to my final health. Let's see if I can clutch this out with one HP. I save enough EX cards for a bomb. I go in. I'm, I'm accidentally mashing pause because I'm trying to press EX, and I get the bomb off. Yes! And in the end, I managed to clutch it out and I defeat Dr. Cow's robot. After Dr. Cow, we have Sally stage play. And Sally stage play was really easy. I just stood on one side, shot my roundabout, stood on the other, shot my roundabout for the first phase. I did the exact same thing for the second phase. This boss was really easy. It only took me like three or four tries to do. For the third phase, I just stood underneath her and dodged whatever uh, she had coming at me. I got the dodge roll right here, which I was very impressed with. And I realized I'm getting really comfortable with my feet on the stick. So we're seeing a lot of progress in that department right now. Eventually, I do make it to the final phase. And I'm able just to dodge the umbrella and shoot enough roundabouts to eventually take down Sally stage play. Yes! Let's go! Werner Wurman is probably the second easiest boss fight in this challenge next to the root pack. Of course, it was super easy. As you can see, the bosses where I'm able to stand in one spot for a long period of time are the ones that are the easiest for me. And Werner Wurman was a, a perfect example of that. Except I hit a little sweet maneuver right here. I was pretty proud about this. My movement is getting really good. But I managed to beat Werner Wurman on my first try. It was probably the easiest boss I've ever done. But I think I deserve a little break. I had to go through some pretty hard bosses to get here. Let's go! Okay, next we have Captain Brinybeard. And Captain Brinybeard was also really easy because one of those bosses I could just stand in the corner and shoot my roundabout. Anything that came my way, I was able to just sit in the corner and dodge. It was actually very easy. I know I have one HP, but I'm still able to just one HP clutch just because check this out. I can just sit in the corner and nothing can hit me. The fireballs can't hit me and the laser can't hit me. The only thing that can hit me is that barrel, but I can just dodge roll out of the way. Then I continue ducking under the laser and I defeat Captain Brinybeard. Let's go. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't that bad. Calamaria is the second to the last boss until we meet up with King Dice. And the Calamaria wasn't too bad. Her first phase, she just had a few attacks she used, and I was able to dodge them pretty easily. The most annoying combination that they had was probably Ghost Puffer. Every time I got that, I was just a lot of health, and it was not a good time for me. The thing I had the most problem with this fight was when I turned to stone, you have to mash your stick to get out. And mashing my stick with my grippers was not an easy thing to do. And then also during the third phase, the cave would be so narrow, it was so super hard to navigate. Eventually, I developed a little strategy to mash out of the stone, and I was able to mash out and clutch it out for the win. Yes! The Phantom Express was the only thing standing between me and facing King Dice, and I was ready to take him on. The Phantom Express actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. A lot of times, I was able just to stand in one spot, which, you know, makes it really easy for me. I breezed through the first phase, and then I also breezed through the second phase. I was going really quick on these. The third phase comes up, and I thought it was going to be a lot harder, but I was able just to jump around, use my roundabout, and I got really good at parrying at this point, so I was able to parry the cart to where I wanted to be. I take off the first head, and then I take out the second head, and we're on to the final phase. The final phase was pretty hard because I had to parry the little light bulb on its butt. And when I parry the bulb, his hatch opens up, so I'm able to shoot his heart. And so I just start jumping around and shooting roundabouts until I'm able to take him down. It felt like all the training I've done in the other bosses led up to this point, and I was able to get Phantom Express done extremely quickly. After beating 17 bosses with my grippers, I have finally made it to Inkwell Hell. The only thing standing between me and the final boss, the devil, was the King Dice himself. And I knew the King Dice would be a lot harder than the devil, so I was ready to get it done with and finish this off. The bosses I want to fight are numbers 1, 4, and 9. And they all have heart containers on, so that's an added bonus. The first boss is the Tipsy Troop. The second boss is Pip and Dot. And the third boss is Mangosteen. I chose these bosses because I figured these would be the easiest to beat with my feet. And then to fight King Dice himself, all I have to do is roll two to hit the safe spot let's see what i get and i roll a one i have to fight mr chimes the most annoying boss on this list i go into mr chimes with six health and i come out with two health left let's see if i can clutch out king dice i begin the king dice fight and i get ready to parry the cards because i'm using miss chalice my dash is actually my parry so i have to dash around the cards but i think this made it a little bit easier the only problem was to parry the cards i would have to stop shooting my roundabout because i needed to dedicate my other foot to parrying the cards this was really hard to do and it took me a while to adapt to it during my first run i'm so close to making it but i succumbed to the cards i was able to make it to the last stage pretty easily but these cards kept destroying me i was not able to make it through i was going to make a few adjustments if i wanted to make it past these cards but over time i eventually got better at juggling myself over these cards and then i made it to the final stage with six health and i managed to clutch out king dice the only thing stopping me now from completing this challenge was the devil himself let's see if we can beat him i walk on over to the devil's castle head hell high ready to complete this challenge 
challenge. Once I have vanquished the devil, the Cuphead No Hand Challenge will have been completed. I jump straight in and I tell you what, the devil is one of the easiest bosses in the game compared to what I've been through. I defeated Dr. Cow. I beat Grim Matchstick. I destroyed the Root Pack and I made it all the way to the devil to finish him off. And I did not come to play around. I destroyed the first phase. I was able to then get through the second phase and I still had two health left. I sadly was beaten during the third phase. I was not able to keep up with the amount of health I had, but I knew that it was possible. On my second try, I was able to make it again to the third phase and even to the final phase. I pointed my roundabout up at it with only one HP and I prayed that I would one HP clutch it. Let's see if I do it. On my third try, I made it all the way through the first phase, breezed through the second phase, completely obliterated the third phase, and I made it to the final phase with two health. All I had to do was shoot my roundabout up and make sure I don't get hit by this chip. I could afford to take one hit though. In the end, I managed to close out the devil on my third attempt, and I have successfully yes! beaten Cuphead without we using my it! hands. We're and that done! is me beating Cuphead with no hands. Thanks for watching. We beat all, we beat Cuphead with our feet, dude. We beat Cuphead with our feet, dude. We did it.